Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Kleena here and today I'm going to take you through the solution to question 4 from this Leaving Cert Higher Level Maths paper and this question is based on trigonometry. So let's get right into it. So the first part of this question, question A part 1, is a proof and it asks us to prove that tan of A minus B is equal to the tan of A minus tan B all over 1 plus tan A multiplied by tan B. So for the proofs, my biggest recommendations for you when you're studying these is to just be able to find out where you can get the information that you need for the proofs, okay? And what I mean by this is the log tables. So find out which rules in the log tables are going to be useful for each proof. So now let's go to the log tables and find the first um, formula that we're going to need for this question. So the first rule or formula that's going to come in handy for this question is tan of a is equal to sine of a over cos of a, okay? So this is basically writing the tan of something in terms of the sine and the cos of something, okay? So you can see in our question that it's asking us to find the tan of a plus b, okay? So now let's use this rule. So I'm just going to write it up here so we remember it. So now let's write tan of a minus b in this form. So tan of a plus b, or a minus b, my apologies, is equal to the sine of a minus b all over the cos of a minus b. So now when we get to this point, we're going to go back to our log tables. And now the rule that we're going to use is the rule that expands on the sine of a minus b and the cos of a minus b. So these formulas can be found on page 14 of your log tables. So we can see here we have the cos of a minus b expanded. So that's the cos of a cos b plus sine a sine b. And then we have sine of a minus b, and that's equal to sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. So now taking these rules directly out of the log tables, we're going to rewrite what we have here. Okay, so the sine of a minus b turns into sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. And cos of a minus b turns into cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. Okay. So we're done using the rules from the log tables for a moment. And what we want to do now is we see here that this needs to turn into a one. So this needs to be a one. So how are we going to do that? To turn that into a one, we can divide it by itself. So cos a cos b divided by cos a cos b will give us one. But we can't just do that. If we're going to do that, we have to divide every expression here by cos a cos b. So I'll show you how we're going to do that. So we're going to have sine a cos b from here divided by cos a cos b and then we have minus cos a cos sine b and that's just from here and again divided by cos a cos b. Of course when we divide cos a cos b by itself we are left with 1 and you can see that we're getting closer and closer to what it wants us to prove. Okay so 1 plus sine a sine b divided by cos a cos b. Okay, now let's see what we can cancel here. Here we can cancel cos b above and below the line. Here we can cancel cos a above and below the line. Okay, and we can't cancel anything down here. So now we are left with, and I'm just going to rewrite it again, sine a divided by cos of a minus sine b divided by the cos of b all over 1 plus sine a sine b divided by cos a cos b. Okay. So now we're going to go back to the rule that we used at the very start of this question. And that is that the tan of A is equal to the sine of A over the cos of A. But we're going to have to use this rule backwards now. So sine of A over the cos of A is equal to the tan of A. And sine of B divided by the cos of B is equal to the tan of B. So on top here we have tan of A minus tan of B, which is exactly what we want on top. So I'm going to put in an equal sign, tan A minus tan B, okay, put that all over 1 plus. Now, what can we do with this? We can see, again, using the same rule that we just used, we have, here we have a sine A, the A is just looking a bit funky, sine A divided by cos A, okay, and that is the tan of A, again using this rule, and then sine B divided by the cos of B, which is again tan B. So we have tan A multiplied by tan B. And that's exactly what we want below. So we have 1 plus tan A tan B. And this is our final answer. We have proved that 
the tan of A minus B can be written as tan A minus tan B divided by 1 plus tan A tan B. And for this question, you're going to end up with a total of 10 marks. Now, the next question, question A part 2, asks us to rewrite or to write tan of 15 in the form root A minus 1 divided by root A plus 1, where A is a natural number. Now, my biggest tip for a question like this, which comes directly after the proof, is to remember what you've done in the proof and try apply that to this question. So in this question, you'll remember that we worked out the tan of A minus B. Now, you're not going to find the tan of 15 in the table in the log tables, which I'm going to go to now. So as you can see here, there's no tan of 15. We do, however, have the tan of 60 and the tan of 45. And 60 minus 45 will give you 15. So if, re if we rewrite tan of 15 as tan of 60 minus 45, does this not look very similar to what we had just done in the previous question? So we'll remember what we've done in the previous question. We'll remember that the tan of A minus B was equal to tan A minus tan B all over 1 plus tan A tan B. So now, in this case, 60 is A and 45 is B. So let's figure out the tan of 60 and the tan of 45 and rewrite this here. So this table here gives us the tan of 60 and 45. So the tan of 60 is root 3 and the tan of 45 is 1. So I'm just going to write that there. Tan 60 is equal to root 3. Tan of 45 is equal to 1. So now we have the tan of A minus B is equal to the tan of A, which is the tan of 60. So that's going to be root 3. Minus the tan of B, which is 1, all over 1 plus the tan of A, which is root 3, by the tan of B, which is 1. So it's just 1 plus root 3. So I'm going to write the tan of 15 is equal to root 3 minus 1 over 1 plus root 3. And now we have it in the correct form. I'm just going to rearrange it here so that we have root A in front both times. So that's root 3 minus 1 all over root 3 plus 1. And that is our final answer. And for this question, you are going to get 10 marks. Now, you could also rewrite the tan of 15 as the tan of 45 minus the tan of 30 in the same way, and then find um, the tan of 45 and the tan of 30 in third form, and just follow all the steps that we've done. But there's just a few more calculations required in this um, by doing it in this way. So the way I went through was easier, but if you did it the other way, you should end up with the same answer. So now we're just moving on to the final part of this question, part B, where we're told that the triangle ABC is shown in the diagram below, and that AC, that AC and BC are the same, okay? So that means that this is an isosceles triangle. And in an isosceles triangle, the two angles at the base of the even sides are going to be the same. So we're given one angle, we're given this 45 degree angle. So these two angles are going to be 180 minus 45 divided by 2. And we're going to work that out in a second. We're told also that AB here is 10 root 2 minus root 2. And we're asked to find the length AB or AC, my apologies. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out these angles here. So they are going to be 180 degrees because that's the amount of degrees in a full triangle. Minus 45 degrees, this angle here, and then divided by 2 because these guys are going to be even. So I'm going to pop that into the calculator and that is 67.5 degrees each. So now we're looking for this length here and I'm going to call that x. So we have the angle across from it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the sine rule to figure this out. And the sine rule is in our log tables. So here we have the sine rule on page 16. And in a triangle like this here, we're told that A over sine A is equal to B over sine B is equal to C over sine C. So to work out the length of X, we're going to put X or AC, whichever you want to call it, over the sine of the angle across from it. So the, the angle across from it is going to be 67.5 degrees. So sine of 67.5. And that's going to be equal to this length here. So 10 root 2 minus root 2 all over the sine of the angle across from it. And that is 45 degrees. 
Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my calculator is in degree mode. You can see that mine is because of this D up the top here. If you have an R up the top there, that means that you're in radian mode. And to change here, you're going to press the shift button and then the setup button here and then change it into degree mode by pressing three. So we're looking for X. So the first thing we're going to do is cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply X by sine of 45 and I'm going to multiply sine of 67.5 by 10 root 2 minus root 2. So I'm left with X sine 45 and that's equal to the sine of 67.5 multiplied by 10 root 2 minus root 2. So x is equal to, and it's easier to put all this into the calculator at the same time, you have less opportunity to make a simple mistake. So x is equal to the sine of 67.5 multiplied by 10 root 2 minus root 2 divided by the sine of 45. And let's put this into the calculator. So we have the sine of 67.5 multiplied by 10 root 2 minus root 2. And then on the bottom we have the sine of 45. So x is equal to 10, and that means that AC, the length of AC, is equal to 10. And that is our final answer, and that is worth 10 marks. Okay guys, so that's all for this question. I hope you found this video helpful and that it might have cleared up any questions that you may have had. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.